In this video, we're going to describe the nuclear spin energy states that are uh, necessary to understand NMR spectroscopy. All right, so again, we just defined what the nuclear spin is. Okay, and we said that for a uh, class of atoms uh, that we have right here, there's other members in this family, but these are the ones more important. Okay, we can say that there's a net spin in the nucleus, okay, which is characterized by a total spin of something that we call one half. And what this means is that uh, uh, these nuclei are going to have two ways to spin, okay, which we're going to call up or down. Now, in principle, uh, spinning up or spinning down should have exactly the same energy, which means that if you have two uh, energy states, two en uh, spin states that are uh, of exactly the same energy, then you can do a spectroscopy with it. Okay, but it turns out that um, you can change the energy of these spin states if you apply an external magnetic field. And that's in, this is something that is uh, very important about an MRS microscopy. The of this is that uh, you're going to be, be putting everything in a large external magnetic field that we're going to call B sub naught. Okay, why does this alter uh, the energies of the nuclear spin states of uh, a nucleus? Well, uh, it turns out that a nucleus is charged. Okay, so any spinning motion that you have is going to generate a tiny little magnetic field. Okay, so nuclei is spinning because you have uh, induced a small magnetic field, okay, it can behave like a bar magnet. Okay, and this bar magnet can interact with uh, the external magnetic field two different ways. I notice that if you have uh, the external magnetic field pointing this way, and your motion is such that the uh, uh, magnetic field that you're inducing from this spinning motion is parallel to the external magnetic field, then you have something that is of lower energy, then the situation in which you're spinning motion uh, generates an uh, induced a tiny little magnetic field that is perpendicular to that large external magnetic field. Okay, so that's going to separate the energies of those uh, up uh, uh, spinning or down spinning uh, motions, and then we're going to be able to do spectroscopy with them. Okay, that's that's the key of NMR spectroscopy. All right, so to actually find out what the exact energy of the spin up and the spin down, or uh, uh, towards the field and against the field, would be. Uh, the way that we would proceed here is to just to set up what the Schrodinger equation would be for uh, a system, a nuclear spin, uh, in the presence of an external magnetic field. Now, uh, we're not going to solve this expression, we're just going to look at the solutions and see what we can learn from. Okay, so again, for nuclei that have a total spin of one half, and these four uh, nuclei, nuclei are part of this family, it turns out that the energy of those two spinning motions. Okay, we're going to call it m sub i, where m sub i is the quantum number that tells you uh, the spinning motion. This can be either one half or minus one half. Okay, this is going to be equal to minus a parameter called gamma, okay, h over two pi b naught m sub i. All right, so let's see uh, what each one of these uh, parameters are. This is called the gyromagnetic ratio, or the magne magnetogenic ratio, and this is something that depends on every uh, nucleus. Okay, so this will be a constant, uh, which is different for the proton, carbon-13, fluorine-19, phosphorus-31, and so forth. Okay, something that is specific to its nucleus. There are tables, and uh, this data will be provided to you. This is Planck's constant, that is 2 pi, that is the uh, external magnetic field, and usually uh, the units that we're going to be using right here are going to be Tesla, okay, to measure the strength of a magnetic field. And this is simply the spin quantum number, the nuclear spin quantum number. And again, because you only have two ways to spin towards the field or against the field, okay, this is actually what separates those two nuclear spin states. And again, the values possible are plus one half and minus one half. Plus one half is uh, uh, the, val the value of the uh, spin quantum number in which you generate a tiny little magnetic field that is parallel to the external magnetic field. Okay, we're also going to call this an alpha spin, and it's the one of lower energy. And then uh, m is n sub i equal to minus one half is the beta spin, the one that is uh, the state that is going to give you more energy. All right, so now we have two uh, energy states that are going to be separated in energy, and we can do spectroscopy. Right, the idea is that now uh, if you have a nucleus that is spinning towards the field, okay, like that. Uh, that is low energy, you can chain a photon and then invert the spin motion so that you promote the system to an, an energetically excited state, spin against the field. Okay, and then uh, you can see peaks in the spectrum from that. 
Right, so uh, the next thing we're going to do in this video is to, to try to calculate exactly what is the difference in energy that we have between these two spin states, okay? So again, the idea is that the low energy state is going to be uh, your alpha spin, the high energy state is going to be your beta spin. So uh, the difference in energy between the alpha and beta spin is what we need to do a spectroscopy, right? So again, the energy of the photon that you need to shine has to be equal to the difference in energy between the initial state and the final state. Okay, here it's going to be the alpha to the beta nuclear spin states. All right, so we have the equation there for uh, each one of the states. Okay, so if, you, uh, if we erase this, this is going to be simply equal to the energy of the final state, energy of the beta state, minus the energy of the initial state, energy of the alpha state. All right, so let's see uh, how that works. This is H mu of the photon. It's going to be equal to the energy of the beta state. Okay, so we have that this is equal to minus gamma b naught h over 2 pi m sub i, but m sub i for the beta spin is equal to minus 1 half minus the energy of the initial state. And the initial state has an energy of minus gamma b naught h over 2 pi, and then uh, the spin alpha, which is plus 1 half. Okay, so when we do this, uh, h nu of your photon, the energy of the photon is going to be as follows. This minus with this minus is a plus one half of all these, and minus with minus is plus one half of all these. Right, so the answer is going to be gamma b naught h over two pi. Okay, that is the difference in energy between the alpha and beta and nuclear spins. Okay, so we're gonna have here an alpha nuclear spin, a beta nuclear spin, and again, the idea is that we're going to be able to promote the transition from an alpha to a beta nuclear spin by shining a photon of appropriate energy. Okay, now, uh, this is very important. Okay, you actually need a very strong magnetic field to be able to do an MR spectroscopy. Okay, the typical strengths of the magnetic fields that we need here are going to be on the order of, say, uh, about 2 to perhaps 20 Tesla, 2 to 20 Tesla. Okay, and just to give you uh, some reference for how strong this magnetic field is. If you compare these fields to the to Earth's magnetic field, okay, this uh, a magnetic field is about a million times stronger than Earth's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field is on the order of about 20 to 40 uh, uh, micro Tesla. Okay, so again, we're talking about really strong magnetic fields, and when you actually have this type of magnetic fields, then the idea is that the energy that you get out of this is going to be on the order of 10 to the minus 26 joules. Okay, 10 to the minus 26 joules is a very small energy compared to the type of energy spacing that we had between electronic energy states in UV spectroscopy, which was on the order of 10 to the minus 19 joules. And it's actually also much smaller uh, than the t uh, difference in energy that we had between vibrational states in infrared spectroscopy, which is on the order of 10 to the minus 20 uh, joules. Okay, so you have Again, energy spaces that are spaces that are actually about a million times uh, uh, smaller than what you need for, say, UVBs or infrared spectroscopy. What that means is that the photons that you actually need to be able to promote these nuclear spin transitions are going to have to be about a million times less energetic than the photons of infrared or UV spectroscopy. Right. So it turns out that these radio frequency photons uh, that are the ones that you need to be able to do these nuclear uh, spin state transitions. And again, you can only do this if you actually are working with a really strong magnetic field. Okay, so to summarize, what we've done in this video is just write um, uh, the energy expression for uh, the spin in motion of a nucleus in an external magnetic field. And then we've come up with the resonance condition for NMR spectroscopy, and we recognize that uh, NMR spectroscopy is going to necessitate radio frequency photons to promote a nuclear spin transition from an alpha to a beta uh, state. Okay, when you have the sample in a strong magnetic field.